Now we've pretty much covered everything you actually need to start working with dates and times in PHP. The date time class is pretty simple, but just to complement this, we're going to look at some useful functions uh, that you might need along the way. So the first one is going to be the time function. Let's just go ahead and echo the result of this out and see exactly what we get here. This actually gives us a Unix timestamp. So this can be very useful depending on how you're storing dates and times. You may wish to store a Unix timestamp. It's also useful for other things as well. But either way, you know that you've got that there just now. Now, fairly similar to this is the micro time function. Now, if we go ahead and look at the result of this, you can see that we get the micro time just here uh, and uh, that can be useful as well, particularly for generating uh, random or semi-random things. Now, what you can actually do is go ahead and just pass in the true value here and this will give you back the value as a float. So this is usually what you would use. This is our Unix timestamp and then this is the micro time just after. So obviously this is uh, uh, pretty useful depending on how precise you actually need to be. So otherwise, kind of away from the object oriented style of the date time class, we have the date function. You may have actually used this before, at least seen it before. What this allows us to do is very quickly just give us a date and a time. So we can say something like DMY using the formats that we've already seen. And you can see here that we get exactly that. So really, depending on where you're generating things, this can actually be quite useful. But of course, you don't then have the flexibility of the date time class. It really depends on what you're doing. So next, when you are actually validating dates, how do you know that a date that you've actually given is correct? Well, let's think about a couple of months and the amount of days in them and see if we can use a function to check if these are valid. So for example, the date of July or the month rather of July has 31 days. The month of September has 30 days. So therefore using that logic, September the 31st isn't a valid date. So we can check this. And likewise, I guess uh, July the 32nd is not a valid date or so on and so forth. So we can actually use the check date function for this, passing in the month, passing in the day and passing in the year. So let's start out using July. So we'll say 7, 31 and then any year. So 2016. So let's go and do a var dump on this. What we will get is a true or a false value, a Boolean. So in this case, we get a true. Now, if we were to say well, the 32nd of July, obviously that is not a valid date because there are no months with 32 days in. So what about moving on to September then? If we were to say 31 here, that actually still returns false. So it's clever enough to say, well, there aren't 31 days. So the only valid date, or at least up to, is 30. So we can go ahead and change that. So why would this actually be useful? Well, if you're allowing users to enter dates into a form by themselves, this can be very useful. Even if you are using drop downs within a form, people can very easily modify dates. So for example, if you had a form with uh, say July or uh, September up to 30 in terms of September, someone could very easily just modify the value of an option within a select element and go ahead and try and submit 31. What you want to do is use this to check a date is valid, very, very straightforward. And you can do that before you start to pass it into the date time class. So lastly, we looked earlier at date time list identifiers. And remember what this gave us, if we just do a var dump on this, was a list of, or rather date time zone list identifiers. This gave us a list of all of the time zones that we can actually use. Now, sometimes when you are maybe looping through and you want to output these, this is a little bit of a mouthful to at least type. So what we can actually do is go ahead and use a different function for this. It's just an alias of it. So we can use time zone identifiers list. We could say as time zone. And in here, we can obviously go ahead and echo out a time zone. And of course you would put this in some kind of form. Either way, it's a much easier way to go ahead and output all of the available time zones if you are allowing users to check them. 
So that is pretty much it for useful functions. Most of what you need is within date time, but sometimes you will need things like time or date, depending on what you're doing.